It's lunchtime on a Thursday, a busy day at Carnitas Snack Shack in North Park. Thursday is special. That's the day Chef Hannes Cavan serves foie gras. There it is in all of its beautiful glory. That brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? Cavan's six-month-old restaurant specializes in pork. It's named after his pet pig, Carnitas. Cavan's love of pork is almost primal. He assures us this diagram of meat cuts is accurate. Very accurate. But Cavan also loves foie gras. Most of the time he sears it, but he prepares it differently each week. On this day, he's made a foie gravy. I want people to enjoy it. You know, if they're taking a risk to order it, I want them to go, wow, this tastes good, and hopefully open their, you know, palate and their choice of cuisines. What people come to this area for, foie gras. Foie gras is a delicacy, and it's expensive, though not at Carnita's Snack Shack. That's what's kind of ridiculous here. We sell for $8, <laughs> which generally runs 18 to 25 on most menus. Banning foie gras might not mean much to your average consumer who rarely eats such pricey fare. But the debate reminds us of something many of us deny on a regular basis. We don't like to think about where our food comes from, because often where it comes from isn't pretty. People are allowed to eat. Food, you just can't torture it before you uh, kill it. So that's, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Brian Pease has been fighting to ban foie gras for 10 years. In 2002, he started what he calls the foie gras investigations. There are two main foie gras farms in the U.S. He went to both with a video camera. I have just walked into these farms, uh, and I've done it at night when uh, managers aren't around to tell me to leave, but I've gone up to the workers and videotaped them Force feeding. The state ban prohibits the force feeding of ducks to enlarge their liver. As of now, this is the only way foie gras can be made. Here's how it works. Ducks roam on a farm for 12 weeks. Fattening the liver takes place in the last two to three weeks before slaughter. Ducks are moved to specific barns and kept in four by six pens. They are fed two to three times a day when a foot-long metal tube is inserted down the duck's gullet, injecting corn mash. The goal is to fatten the liver six to ten times its normal size. I've seen ducks that are having difficulty standing, walking, and breathing. Um, ducks that are on the verge of death from the force feeding. Reports on conditions at the two farms vary. Ducks don't have a gag reflex. They often eat fish whole. As a result, some say insertion of the metal tube does not cause injury. The real issue is the cumulative effect of the force feeding over time and just the massive quantities of food that are being pumped into these ducks. Sonoma Artisan Foie Gras is the sole producer in California. Owner Guillermo Gonzalez told KPBS via email, Our farm is being forced to shut down at the end of June, and the most unfortunate fact is that science has not been given a chance to play a role in this debate, despite the promise of it from our political leadership. The larger impact, however, is that a powerful special interest group with an anti-meat mandate was able to impose its agenda on all of us through violent means and propaganda. Bertrand owns two of San Diego's toniest restaurants, Milflor and Bertrand at Mr. A's, which boasts one of the best views in San Diego. Bertrand grew up on a foie gras farm in southwestern France, watching his grandmother handle the ducks. And I was in there, you know, with my grandma and with my dad when they were force feeding. I saw that a lot, and I, and I never saw one of those sick animals that they represent, you know, those disgusting pictures they've been passing around. Bertrand's chef brings out some foie gras. This is just one duck's liver. As a result of the ban, sales of foie gras have shot up in recent weeks. You know, it's going to be an underground business, I guess. There'll be like a, you know... <laughs> hey, do you have any foie gras there? <laughs> I tell no one. <laughs> Then it'll become extremely expensive, it'll be like drugs. Come July 1st, the fine for selling or producing foie gras in California will be $1,000. For activists like Brian Pease, winning the ban is just the beginning. We're going to be monitoring, we're going to be checking out. I mean, we know who is serving it still, and we're going to keep, we're going to check to make sure that they're not serving it any longer. He may have his work cut out for him. During the two-year ban on foie gras in Chicago, some chefs served a $40 glass of wine to cover the cost of a free side of foie gras.